here's an update on the 80 speech synthesizer in an FPGA for the Mutual Challenge October 2017. The goal of the project is to produce a working equivalent of the General Instruments SP0256 AL2 speech synthesis chip on a Teresic D0 board shown here. I just have this board lying around, uh, but basically you could use any other FPGA board providing that the FPGA is large enough. The um, uh, secondary goal of the project is to try to optimize it for smaller FPGAs, so hopefully it will uh, see some use. Um, I will have to cut corners uh, wherever possible because the retro challenge is almost halfway and uh, I seem to be lacking in progress, so well, let's see how that goes. Um, you can read about uh, my progress on my blog, namosley.wordpress.com. How does the SP0256 AL2 actually work? Uh, well, it's based on the source filter model, and um, this model uses physical aspects of the human anatomy to generate voice-like sounds. Um, so it starts with the source. The source can generate two types of signal, a pitch signal based on pulses, and this models the vocal cords, and there's also a noise signal that mimics the sound of air flowing. Now the output of the source uh, is fed into the filter, which removes or accentuates certain frequencies, and in this way different vowels or nasal sounds can be produced. By varying the pitch and the filter characteristics over time, speech is produced. And this model is actually quite flexible. Now this type of generative model does not require a lot of memory, and it made it possible to produce an IC with somewhat intelligible speech for the first time. Rather than storing complete words or sentences, the SP0256 AL2 generates speech by the concatenation of allophones. And these are basically small snippets of speech, for instance, vowels and fricatives, sibilants, and nasal sounds, and stops. Uh, here's a complete list of all the commands you can send to the SP0256 AL2. There are five pauses of different lengths, and the remaining of the 64 commands are all allophones. So, for instance, here's oi, uh, part of the word boy, or I, part of the word sky, or E, eh, part of the word end, and so on. Well, let's see what a block diagram of the SP256 AL2 looks like. Well, we start with a pulse generator, and of course this needs some information about the pitch period. So uh, there's an input to set the pitch period, and basically all this generator does is generate a small pulse for a number of samples, which is determined by the pitch period, and then it just repeats again. That's, that's basically all it does. Um, the second thing uh, the source can do is generate a noise signal, so we have a noise generator here, and there's also a switch to select between the pulse generator and the noise generator, and um, so you can't actually mix the two, it's just one or the other and uh, this is called the voiced or unvoiced control. The output of the source goes into the uh, filter, and in this case it's a 12-pole filter, and as an input we also have the filter parameters, which, uh, like the pitch, uh, vary over time. Now the output of the filter is fed into the digital-to-analog converter, which runs at about 10 kilohertz on the original chip, and this produces an analog signal for the speech. So this is actually the complete source filter model. Now we have to vary, of course, the pitch and the filter parameters, and we have to control the voiced and unvoiced setting uh, over time. So to do this, uh, or there's also a controller with uh, a small ROM implemented. So you would actually send um, which allophone you want to produce through the uh, interface control bus to the controller, and this will play back a very small sequence uh, stored in ROM for each allophone to control the pitch and the filter and the unvoiced voiced control, etc. And um, yeah, this is basically that's uh, 
uh, all that's needed for uh, implementing the SP0256 AL2. So now that we've seen the block diagram of the SP0256 AL2, how do we actually implement those blocks on an FPGA? Um, well, I won't cover the pulse generator in the source because it's so trivial. It's basically a counter that produces a pulse every once in a while. So that's uh, quite simple to, uh, to do. Uh, the other half of the source is the noise generator. And we can implement this using a linear feedback shift register. Uh, these are quite well-known structures that produce uh, noise. And they look like this, and they consist of uh, flip-flops and one or more XOR gates. And the output and inter intermediate results are fed back via the XOR gate to the input. And this generates a um, pseudo-random one-bit uh, noise signal. And they, uh, yeah, the structure is quite small, and the noise produced is, uh, is very good. So that's the source done. Um, the output of the source is fed into the filter shown here. And um, the 12 pole filter consists of an input multiplier C to control the amplitude and six identical filter blocks, which each implement a second order filter. And this results in an overall 12th order filter. Uh, each filter section consists of two registers, also known as the filter states. So here's one, there's the other register. An updated output of the filter is calculated by multiplying the states with their respective coefficients A1 and A2, and these results are subtracted from the input. And then after this, the filter states are updated, and this uh, um, a process is repeated over and over again. We have to control the filter and the source and for this we have a controller block and the controller block basically runs a small program for each allophone and the program is contained in a 4 kilobyte ROM and the uh, controller is also very simple it uh, basically has four instructions a jump instruction and a return instruction and a instruction to set the filter coefficients which also includes pitch and the voiced and unvoiced setting of the source. And there's also a, a, an additional command that updates the pitch only. So the filter stays the same, but the, uh, the, only the pitch is updated. And that's, uh, that's basically all that's needed uh, to generate the speech in the SP0256 AL2. Now, as an example, um, here we have the allophone for E, and the command consists of an amplitude of 384, a duration of 6, and a pitch of 91. And here you can see all the uh, filter coefficients that are loaded into the, uh, into the filter. And I've also plotted the filter response, uh, which uh, corresponds to this allophone. So this is a very simple allophone. It only has one command. Some of the allophones have uh, have multiple. So if you look at the filter characteristic, uh, there's a, a, a peak at around 600 hertz. So there, the uh, the output of the of the pitch generator is uh, accentuated, and uh, there are also two peaks: one at well, let's say 1800, and there's another at two and a half kilohertz, and then here's uh, some more high frequency uh, uh, accentuation. And um, this basically sounds like this. I'll play that again. It does sound a bit bland, but uh, as, as soon as you concatenate other allophones, uh, then it, uh, yeah, it becomes intelligible. Now, remember when I said I was going to cut corners? Well, one of the ways to cut corners is in the digital to analog converter. What I'm going to try to use uh, um, as a first implementation is a very simple 8-bit pulse width modulated based uh, digital to analog converter. What you have is a counter and a comparator 
and that generates a one bit output pulse and after you low pass filter it with a uh, resistor and a capacitor you hopefully end up with something that looks like the signal that you want to generate. In practice this actually has quite a lot of distortion but um, as the um, speech synthesis engine isn't, uh, isn't completely noise free, um, to put it mildly, I don't think it, uh, it'll really matter if we uh, cut corners here. For the implementation of the uh, digital analog converter we have an 8-bit counter and a comparator and uh, yeah, we want to have a 10 kHz uh, sample rate and in order to have this we have to clock it at uh, approximately 2.5 MHz. All right then, that's it for now. Check out the blog at namosley.wordpress.com or if you want to see the code, uh, which I'll try to keep updated during the Retro Challenge itself as well, uh, go to GitHub. Uh, my username is trcwm and it's slash speech256. So yeah, have fun. Bye now. Thanks to John Linville for one informational challenge contest.